Hello friends, Adam here with FED. I've been putting polls up on the YouTube channel about which game in the series is the best, right? We've been comparing all of them. We did like a tournament style thing. I wasn't planning on it being a tournament style thing until someone mentioned it in a comment. And I was like, yeah, why not? We might as well do them all. So we started off the first two games in the series. And we're going to just, this isn't a tier list. This is just showing what you guys picked. So there's going to be first round losers and second round losers, semifinal loser, all that, up until we get to the best one. At the time of recording this, in uh, all fairness, the final round is still up, and I just barely posted it really, maybe like 30 minutes ago. But even with just 30 minutes, I have a good idea of where it's going to land. If it doesn't land the way I think it's going to, then I will make an update video, but I really doubt it. Anyways, if you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and uh, make sure to stick around. Uh, we do all sorts of Fire Emblem content. All right. So round one, our very first matchup was Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light and Fire Emblem Gaiden. So FE1 and FE2. I expected FE1 to win here. FE1 was definitely going to win here, so that puts Gaiden in our first round loser tier. Gaiden is a goofy game. FE1 is definitely a more complete package. That being said, losing by this much surprised me. I didn't think it would be this, uh, this much of a disparity between the two games. Gaiden's fun, I'll be honest. I think it's really goofy. It makes a lot of bad decisions as far as design. A lot of the maps are pretty bland, but it was experimental. It tried new things, and that's great. But, yeah, it's kind of a dumpster fire. I, I would say this was the correct pick by the people. I would say that FE1 is indeed the better game. Moving on to our next matchup. We have, which game is better? Fire Emblem Binding Blade or Fire Emblem Mystery of the Emblem? Now, this one's wild. You guys severely got it wrong here. Saying that Mystery of the Emblem is this much worse than the Binding Blade is actually crazy. I'm not the biggest FE3 lover, I'll be honest. I prefer FE12. I prefer playing it every day of the week. But the Binding Blade is a GBA game, and I am so disappointed in the GBA games overall. The fact that they came off of Thracia and decided to strip the game down to its bare essentials and be what it is, you know? Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think Fire Emblem at its core is really interesting, and it allows for some deep strategy even when you strip away skills and and you know weird recruitment recruitments and, and stuff like that that being said i do think you guys may have uh, gotten it wrong here in my opinion i think uh the binding blade is a solid entry but I don't know, man. It just doesn't do it for me personally. The GBA games in general though, don't do it for me. So that's my biggest problem uh, overall here. But 80 to 20% is a little insane. A little insane. This is probably a big thing, though. Most people just haven't played Mystery of the Emblem. I think a lot of more people have gone in and, and done the translation process for, for Binding Blade and are more interested in that because, you know, Roy's in it, who's in Super Smash Brothers and everything. Right, everyone played FE7, and they were like, oh, this guy's not named Roy. Who the heck is Ella Wood? And then he went and found the Binding Blade. So I get why it won, but I don't agree with it. All right, next round. Here we have uh, Fire Emblem Awakening versus Fire Emblem Fades. Honestly, these two going up against each other. This, this one was our first random pick. The other ones were not random. This is our first random pick, and it was kind of crazy that these two went up against each other in the first round. The fact that Fates lost was very surprising to me. What was represented with Conquest? Fates is so much more interesting in the unit building department. It is an incredibly uh, deep in that, uh, in that realm, being able to build units how you want them to. There's so many skill combos that are really fun and cool and really interesting units that can get access to those skills early in, in uh, Felicia and Jacob, which you always have access to, right? And I think that's really cool stuff, and I really enjoy it. I think the gameplay of Fates is a hundred times better than anything Awakening has. But 
we just said which game is better, not which one is more fun to play. And it looks like a lot of people decided that Awakening was the total package compared to Fates. I will admit, Fates' story is a little lacking. The characters may be a little lacking too. Especially outside of supports. I've, I've been told that in supports, a lot of the characters are really cool. But that's not my area of expertise. This one is definitely shocking to me. I would, I prefer Fates. I think it's a better game. But I guess total package, if you're really into story and supports and stuff, Awakening's probably uh, the pick there. So I would say that this one could have gone either way, but a little shocked by how one-sided it was. Next we have... Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valentia versus Fire Emblem, The Sacred Stones. This one's funny because in a lot of ways, Gaiden kind of inspired Sacred Stones and a lot of its ideas. So it's kind of funny that these two went up against, against each other here. Anyways, I think this is just recency bias. I think Sacred Stones is kind of, kind of beans, I'll be honest. I really don't like the GPA games. And Sacred Stones is probably my least favorite of the three. But a lot of people go to bat for Sacred Stones. So it losing this bad to Shadows of Valentia, to me it's just got to be chalked up to uh, 3DS more recency bias and how pretty Echoes is. Echoes is a beautiful game. The art's pretty. The voice acting is almost 100% solid across the board. The script is good. Most everything in that game is solid, except the gameplay is a little lacking. So I was surprised that so many people were okay with that compared to Sacred Stones, which is another game that people claim is the total package. So Sacred Stones losing here was honestly a bit shocking, but again, there's the, the recency bias of it being a 3DS title. New is always better, but it also just means that newer people who uh, found the series are more likely to have played that before Sacred Stones. So I agree with this ranking. I think Sacred Stones is kind of boring, but also Shadows of Valentia is kind of boring too, as far as gameplay goes. So I think it's carried by its presentation. All right. Shadow Dragon and Path of Radiance. Yeah, Path of Radiance is super beloved by the community, even though I think, I think more people play Path of Radiance than Shadow Dragon, as far as like Fire Emblem fans go. But it does surprise me that Path of Radiance beat Shadow Dragon this bad. Shadow Dragon, maybe it's just a really loud minority in the community, but I feel like Shadow Dragon has a lot of fans. Again, could just be a loud minority. But Path of Radiance winning here, it really is the total package. Uh, incredible story as far as Fire Emblem games go. Um, really awesome uh, characters. The gameplay is a little slow, but outside of that, I think it's pretty well designed up until you get to like chapter, even a lot of chapter 17 is fine, but once you get up to like chapter 18 and, and 19 and stuff, the enemy, it becomes enemy spammy a little too much. But before that, it's a pretty solid and tight experience in, in my opinion. So I agree with this one as well. Kind of stinks to see Shadow Dragon go out so soon, especially with uh, with how many loud people seem to like it as much as they do, but maybe Path of Radiance is just uh, that much more loved. All right. Now, this one's tragic. This one is an actual tragedy. You guys obviously have not played enough 3776. It should never lose to the Blazing Blade, of all things. FE7 is not a better game than FE5. Everyone who voted for FE7 either hasn't played FE5 or they gave up on it for some reason. FE5, or maybe you played it with the old like old translation patches or something. If it's been a long time since you've tried FE5, I mean, I don't know, Project Exile's been out for like ever, right? Just play FE5, guys. It is such a good game. Don't let the, the, the rumors or the people saying, oh, it's the hardest game in the series or whatever, scare you away. It is a really fun experience. I will, if you want the game to be like more fun or easier for you, it's okay if people die. Just let units die. There's a ton of them. Their stats are low, so like it doesn't really matter if characters die. Just let people die. Don't worry about missing things. Just experience the game and enjoy it. The story's awesome. I think Leaf is a really cool character. And he has some really 
interesting choices that he has to make. And I don't know, it's just really cool, man. Just play FE5. I, I'm i so sad that it lost to FE7. But we'll get into FE7 later. Uh, more, more in depth. But 3C776, incredible gameplay. Uh, though they are shallow because there's no supports or anything. A really, I think it's a really interesting cast of characters because you learn about these characters through gameplay. Uh, by the way they uh, handle right through things like their stats of course but also their their follow-up critical modifier their fcm which controls how high their crit rate is on their second attack it's really it's a really cool mechanic and their skills and stuff it's it's cool just just play thracia man awesome gameplay i like the characters the story is very solid definitely play thracia please play thracia now, this one's another crazy one. Um, Genealogy of the Holy War losing this bad to Radiant Dawn. Radiant Dawn is probably my favorite game in the series. So, I don't disagree. I love Radiant Dawn a lot. I guess I need to throw Thracia up here on the loser board. Which makes me sad. <clears throat> I love Radiant Dawn, guys. It's incredible. But Genealogy of the Holy War is such a unique experience that I'm assuming it only lost this bad because it hasn't been played by enough people. Which, again, surprises me. Because Radiant Dawn is, like, I would argue is significantly harder to, to play, right? A, a toaster can run a, an SNES emulator, right? And the Genealogy of the Holy War uh, translation patch is incredible. No reason not to play it if you have uh, a computer and are, you know, not afraid to do some vaguely, or not vaguely, some shady things. <laughs> but Genealogy of Holy War is really good. Really good. Um, honestly, I think the gameplay is even good. People crap on it a lot because they say it's, you know, it's too slow or it's a walking simulator. But I think it's really interesting uh, in a lot of ways, especially like, money management and and uh equipment management and, and things like that yeah play genealogy of the holy war it's a really good game all right moving on we have new mystery of the emblem versus engage this one's this one was a wash we we knew that that engage was gonna win here um if for no other reason than just omega recency bias <clears throat> engage is great we'll talk about it later but new mystery of the emblem has some of the tightest gameplay in the series on the higher difficulties i've only, uh, full disclosure i've only played it on the hardest difficulty which is lunatic reverse and it's some of the most fun i've had with fire emblem ever so seeing it lose this bad to engage is a little sad but i get it because you know new mystery of the emblem only released in japan and has uh less than attractive traits about it that people you know it doesn't look very pretty especially compared to engage and just not very many people have played it it's sad but it is the case but if you haven't i would definitely recommend giving it a shot really good gameplay um and really just really fun man really fun and, and i would say if you're willing to give it a shot try the harder difficulties uh you normally have to play the game to get unlock the difficulties but you could just like find a save online which is what i did download you know put that save onto your file or whatever in your game and then you can have the higher difficulties at, at, at base which is what i would do because i think the higher difficulties are more interesting it's more of a puzzle game it's just so different from any fire emblem experience very very good definitely play new mystery of the emblem if you haven't all right now we have our second round. We're moving into our second round uh, of play here. Now, this one, Engage kind of drew, drew the, the short straw. Uh, three houses, I, I had a buy, and uh, this is why. It just steamrolls everything. But everything that Engage added to the series is game, as far as gameplay goes is so fun. If you play without the DLC, it's a really actual challenging experience. The rings are really fun to use. The enga engaging with them and having like three turns of, of, of power boostingness is so fun. And the just rings in general. I, I hope they find a way to bring them back. I they, it's probably not though. It's so sad. It's gonna be like pair up. 
it's gonna it's gonna live on the 3ds or in, in this case engage is uh the ring mechanics are gonna live on the switch and never leave but man it's such a good idea i really hope they iterate on it in the future so fun so the story's garbage though i think like, it, it just is there it has its defenders which i don't get why like stop I, if you're gonna go to bat for something why fire emblem engage why that story did it really impact you in any significant way maybe it did who should i who who am i to judge but to me it just misses and the fact that you fight the same bosses over and over again could have been cool but i personally didn't care for zephia or, or gris or whatever his name is i just i didn't care for him you know if you're gonna have bosses that show up over and over and over again they need to be really uh interesting characters or just like imposing forces of nature like the black knight or something like that but yeah we'll talk about three houses later because it, it, it's on here a lot of course it won right three houses uh especially this community this is a good time to mention that my community here on youtube started really with three houses so there's definitely going to be some some three houses bias here I mean, don't get me wrong. I love it, too. I don't think I would pick it over Engage. The gameplay of Engage is just so good. But again, Three Houses is kind of that total package that I think people were voting for. So yeah, Engage is our second, I mean, our first, second round loser. All right. Uh, this one, yeah, Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light versus Path of Radiance. This one was actually just decided before I even typed it out. I almost didn't even do this poll. Like, come on. We all know that Path of Radiance was going to walk all over Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light. I don't think there's any other game besides Gaiden that it would have beaten. Realistically, there, there, there's just no way. Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light is old. It's slow. Doesn't have much, like it has a story, but it's not conveyed super well. And the characters are all incredibly boring. Just portraits. I get why... It's this low, and if it didn't go up against Gaiden in the first round, it wouldn't have made it to the second round. That being said, it's a cool piece of history. It's fun to see where the series started and how similar it is to how the series is, is now, which is kind of crazy. If you go look at Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light and compare it to Three Houses or Engage, you see the DNA. It's the same game. <laughs> a lot of the formulas are super similar similar if not just the same for like battle stuff it's crazy how they didn't perfect the formula i wouldn't say that but how close they came to perfecting the fire emblem formula on the first try it's very cool moving on we have the binding blade versus the blazing blade i don't know if it's the blazing blade or just blazing blade or just binding blade i just added the the there for some reason i think that's incorrect either way Either way, it doesn't really matter. This one makes sense. People like people like Blazing Blade, man. People, oh, whoops. People like Lynn. People like Hector. Uh, there's probably a couple of people out there who enjoy using Ellawood. I get it. I get it. It was an in, in the introduction for a lot of people to the to the series. But the Binding Blade, you know, I, I ragged on it earlier because it came after Thracia and I feel like it stripped away a lot of what made Fire Emblem interesting in the SNES titles and then gave us kind of a bland uh, experience. But I think the Binding Blade still has a lot of the interesting um, core gameplay that was developed through the SNES titles, through Thracia. You can definitely tell that Thracia, like, it, Thracia definitely inspired a lot of the stuff in Binding Blade if you play through it. But it's obvious too that it was definitely a ripoff. Uh, I shouldn't say a ripoff, but it's very similar to uh, to FE1 in general, or FE3 book one. But it's a good game, ultimately. That's the thing. I, th I think every Fire Emblem game has some merit to it. It's, it's at least somewhat good. So yeah, uh, I, I do get why Blazing Blade beat it though. It's like, it's just that game. All right, and here's where I messed up. I had to put three three games on one poll. So we have Radiant Dawn, Awakening, and Echoes, Shadows of Valentia. 
This one was truly shocking to me. This one was truly shocking to me. Radiant Dawn beating out Awakening and Echoes blew me away. <clears throat> I almost feel like we kind of cheated it, though. I feel like if it were just Radiant Dawn versus Awakening, I think Awakening would have won. I think Echoes split the vote in Radiant Dawn's favor. I think there's some 3DS lovers who would have put, taken their vote from Echoes and put it on Awakening instead of Radiant Dawn. This is kind of the ranking I would agree with, though. I think Radiant Dawn is better than these games. Granted, it's helped a lot by being a sequel to a game that had a really good world building. And it was able to improve on that world building. The story has some weird moments that don't work super well. But on the whole, Radio Nod's a really good experience. With really, I, with really just interesting maps and concepts. You get to use a ton of characters because of the way the armies are split up. Which I think is very cool. That's one of my issues with Fire Emblem. Is that towards the middle-late game, it starts to feel a little monotonous. You're characters start to start to or already have been promoted for a while and there's not a lot of change going on in your army radiodon solves that problem by having you switch between armies all the time that's really cool awakening though pair up was so cool such a good addition to the series and uh, like uh, just that's that is the iteration on the support system that we needed i hope they bring pair up back in some form Preferably in the Fates form, or some some variation of how they did it there. But Awakening, it was really cool that they, they added that. It just made sense for what they were going with there. The, the whole supports and our, our bonds give me strength, all that stuff. And Shadows of Valentia definitely deserved to at least make it to the second round. It has the best presentation in the series. Sure, it doesn't have like crazy 3D cutscenes or whatever but neither does like three houses or or like engage for that matter all that much and the the art is pretty it's just a good game man as far as presentation goes textbook pretty game dude. but yeah I, I i love the radiant dawn pick here by you guys all right now we're into the semi-finals uh this one's a heartbreaking choice man Path of Radiance or Radiant Dawn? Path of Radiance or Radiant Dawn? And this was our closest poll by quite a bit. Uh, Radiant Dawn beating out Path of Radiance I think makes sense as far as gameplay goes. As far as story goes, I think you, there's a lot to be said for Path of Radiance. But Radiant Dawn really did iterate on a lot of the things that made Path of Radiance good. The skill system was improved by a lot by being able to, to swap them around. It just became a more free system, which I think is good for the player generally and for the game overall. The art, it's, I don't want to say it's better, but it, it was just really cool, I guess, to see the updated character arts and all that. I think Makai is a really cool character. I like that Alincia becomes uh, a main character for a portion of the game. I wish she was a little more present. But Path of Radiance, man. Path of Radiance is a really solid Fire Emblem experience. It was the first game that I beat uh, in the series. So I played FE7 first, uh, like at a friend's house or something. But then Path of Radiance was the one that I actually sat down and played all the way through in like middle school or something. I can't remember if I was in middle school. I was in middle school, yeah. And it was such a special, special game for me, man. Obviously, like look at me now. Now I'm, I make YouTube videos about Fire Emblem. But I've played every game in the series. And if it Path of Radiance weren't as good as it was, I would not be where I am today with the series. I love I love Ike's story and his journey. I love that his whole goal is to um, to fill the fill the shoes that his father left behind. And the game does a really good job of conveying just how far he has to go. It's a really beautiful coming of age story that. Uh, is conveyed better than I think most Fire Emblem games uh, have ha have had the, the chance of doing. Yeah, Path of Radiance is a special game, man. I just wish it was a little faster. That's that's the one complaint that everyone has, right? If Path of Radiance were a little faster, it would be 
be a primo experience, prime gaming for sure. All right, our next semifinals match. Let me throw Radiant Dawn up here. Next semifinals match is Fire Emblem Blazing Blade versus Three Houses. Now this is another one that was obviously just gonna be a stomp. Like, come on. Three Houses is 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 the total package. Great unit customization and army creation and all that, and great gameplay overall. A good presentation. It's a solid experience. But Blazing Blade definitely deserved. I, I don't know if I would have put it above. Maybe had it had to go this far. I think I would have had it losing to the Binding Blade personally. But I think the Blazing Blade is such a good introduction to the series. And if it weren't as good of an introduction, who knows where Fire Emblem would be today? Maybe people wouldn't have even picked it up if the Binding Blade was the first game in the series that, to to come out to the West. You know, the, to come out of Japan, or if Sacred Stones was. It is so iconic. So many of the characters are so memorable and, and cool. I'm, I'm not even talking about just Lynn or Elwood or Hector, uh, but characters outside of that are so memorable for me. It is just awesome. Oh, I put Brady Don up there. It's supposed to be Path of Radiance. Anyways. I think the Blazing Blade has some shortcomings in the gameplay department. I think it is a little... Uh, you know, the meme is that it's too easy. If you play Hector Hard Mode, though, I think it's a solid challenge. There's some weird difficulty spikes that are kind of annoying. But overall, it's a really fun game. It's still Fire Emblem at its core, and I think that the the different having three main lords and all that was pretty cool. I wish Lynn would have had more to do in the story past the prologue, but what are you going to do, right? The, the best starting point point in the series probably it is if someone were to ask me where i've never played fire emblem before where should i start if they're willing to go back to the game boy advance this is what i would tell them to do if they aren't willing to do that then i'd probably say path of radiance if they aren't willing to do that then i might say i don't know just play awakening or something <laughs> all right and that brings us to the finals, which I'm going to refresh the page to see how the poll's doing. Let's see if it's changed at all, but I don't think it's going to have. Um, we're only an hour up, but I think it's a, a solid enough. It would have to get a, a pretty big change, and I don't think it's going to happen. We're only 280 votes in. We usually get about about a thousand or 1,500 votes, so it, it could change. But chances are, Three Houses is going to be the winner. <clears throat> Radiant Dawn is my favorite game of the series. Uh, I have fond memories of waking up, you know, two hours before school started to sit down in front of the, the TV, you know, you know, at 5 a.m. or sometimes even 4 a.m. I would just wake up because I was so excited to play when I got it for my birthday. It came out like just before, like literally a day or two before my birthday. I was so hyped to play it because I love Path of Radiance. And I remember starting it up and being kind of disappointed. I was like, where's Ike? I wanted to play as Ike again. But despite that, I ended up falling in love with the Dawn Brigade uh, and, and Micaiah and uh, even the, the, the kind of one-note characters because we just don't have supports to know much about them. I fell in love with Edward and Leonardo. I thought Leonardo was super cool. I thought archers were really cool at the time. Uh, my first playthrough I actually brought all three marksmen into the end game into the tower because i just thought archers were so cool you know so you know both all rolf shannon and leonardo all in the tower <laughs> it was so it was so dumb uh but you know i was playing on like easy mode or whatever so it wasn't like it was too difficult but it was just a really fond experience man uh i think the i think the dawn brigade chapters are probably the best in the game the first 10 chapters are so good I wish it didn't do characters like Fiona Dirty, as, as dirty as it does, or like Tormod, like overall. But it is, yeah, the first, part one is incredible. Part two is awesome. Part three is like, come on. The the, the Grail Mercenaries cutscene where they pop up and save Luc Lucia. 
come on, who didn't pop off for that when they played the game for the first time? Maybe if you you're playing it in like modern, like more modern times, and you know it's coming, it's not cool. But dude, teenage me popped off. I was in on on that that cutscene. As soon as they, they show you know show Rolf and, and Shannon in the tree, I was like, oh no, this is it. That's them. <laughs> And then Ike has the really cool frame that he shows. Oh, such such a good cutscene. Dude, Radiant Dawn's a special game, man. It's a special game. But Three Houses winning, it's deserved. Like, come on, man. Three Houses is such an ambitious game. Sure, you can complain about part one, you know, White Clouds being the same on all the routes. Which seems a little goofy in some aspects. You would think that Chapter 5 could have been unique for all the routes. Seeing as ch chapter five is the Miklon chapter, it's where you go to the uh, is it called the Black Tower or Twisted Tower? I don't know. I'm, pro I'm probably gonna, I'm getting confused, but it's where you fight Sylvain's brother, and it's in Blue Lions territory. It would make sense for the Blue Lions to handle that one, and then maybe you have other chapters for the other houses. But it doesn't bother me because to me, the fun of three houses is building characters and building units to be what you want them to be. Everyone's a blank slate, which I think hurts the game in like the map design and the difficulty and, and just like game balance department overall. But who cares? It's fun. It's super fun to play three houses and make Ignatz into a war master. <laughs> you know, like this, this little dork wielding gauntlets and punching dragons in the face. It's super cool, man. All sorts of stuff like that. I love Three Houses. I knew going into this that Three Houses was going to win this this tournament, this series of polls. But I'm not upset about it, dude. Three Houses is solid. Definitely, definitely deserving of, of being called the GOAT by the community. It makes me a little sad that Radiant Dawn loses here, but I get it. I get it, guys. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, this was just kind of a fun time to just talk about all the, the games in the series. I haven't done that in a while. I love just like thinking about Fire Emblem and, and how they compare to each other and how they're different from one another. This is such a like deep and rich series. There's so much history here. I love it, man. Uh, we are so lucky as a fandom, you know, a Fire as the Fire Emblem community, to have this many games in a ongoing series that we get to enjoy and talk about. So lucky, man. This is so cool. Anyways, thanks for watching. Make sure to like the channel. Uh, like, like the channel. Hilarious. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. Um, and I think, I, I never tell you guys to do this, but hey, you could click the little notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Um, I've, I've got a new schedule figured out uh, for, for life where my evenings should be more available for YouTubeness, for YouTubery, if you will. So I'm hoping to have more consistent uploads and maybe some, some streams here or there. I just haven't figured that all out quite yet, but I'm excited to, to get back and uh, talk to you guys some more and, and hang out. But yeah, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.